Prime Video has a brand new adaptation of Alex Cross. This one's just called Cross. It is, of course, based on James Patterson's very popular novels. It is the first Prime Video adaptation of its sort without a main character who has the initials J.R. Hey, you're right. There you go. It's Alex Cross, not Jack Ryan or Jack Reacher. Now, there are over 30 Alex Cross novels. There are two Morgan Freeman movies. There is a Tyler Perry movie. Ugh. And I'm not sure if Alex Cross is a household name, but I think with certain niche audiences, it might be. Now, I think Ben Watkins, who is the showrunner of Cross, could have taken the Bosch approach, for example, and just adapted a novel a season, like an existing novel a season. This one takes a different approach in that it tells an entirely new story. Mm. And it also does something very, very interesting in that I think it takes on the subject of being a black police officer in 2024 in an interesting way. Like, I know Brooklyn Nine-Nine tried to do it in the pilot of their final season because they felt they had to address it, given everything that was going on in America. And it was just preachy awfulness, right? And I think there is a nuance to the way Cross does it that is absolutely brilliant. I really like the show. I think it's very, very good. But I have to say, almost all of that is due to Aldous Hodge. Mm. Aldous Hodge is the coolest. Like, I loved him in Leverage. He was the best thing about Black Adam. And I'm so glad he gets a starring role in this because he carries the show and he is he is so good. Yeah. 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 There's a certain angry black man that Aldous Hodge brings that I really love. Yes. Right? Okay, I can say that, right? But it's not the typical portrayal of that angry black man. No, no. And and that's the point, right? Like I think I think his version of the angry black man is one almost called for, two addressed as essentially trauma, which is great. But also it's not him being macho. It's not machismo. The angry black man isn't machismo. It's him getting frustrated. It's him getting worked up. It's him not working through his trauma. And I like that version of the angry black man that Aldous Hodge brings to Alex Cross. I mean, all of the Cross elements are there with regards to, like, if you've read the book and you've seen the movies and you know what a genius this guy is with regards to, like, working out people's motives Mm. and figuring out cases and all of that stuff. But it's not overwhelming in the sense that they don't fall back on the trope every episode to show you what a genius Cross is, right? It isn't like a standard TV procedural where you have to show the hero's ability in every episode. This one is spread across the season, but it works because it's all used as character tools. Yeah. Also, what I loved about the series is that halfway through the series, he knows who the bad guy is. Like, you know who the bad guy is from the get-go. Yep. The audience knows. But Cross figures it out halfway through the series. And so... That knowledge makes for an interesting second half of the series because then you have a real cat and mouse game. It's not just, oh, final episode reveal, ta-da, everything's figured out, right? I thought that was a very clever narrative structural play on the part of the showrunner. And I think also that what it does very well is that it shows the police procedural at work not everything goes according to plan they follow down one lead doesn't work out internally they're fighting amongst each other they're arguing and i think i like that it doesn't show these things go according to plan it doesn't always follow script and i like that i like that there was a real showcase of detective work here i kind of disagree with you a little bit with regards to the alex cross magical abilities yes they show it in the first episode he walks in on a case somebody else is doing and he solves it and that's great but i wish that i'd seen a little bit more of that before he delves into one big case you know what i mean because i see because he does something at the end in the final episode in the final showdown i'm like 
oh wait, that's right, he does this thing. In the middle, like episode three or four, when he's sitting in the investigation room, yeah, he kind of plays out like, that thing in his head. But that that felt in air quotes easier because he's seeing all these things. Whereas right. he's sitting down and then suddenly he's like, oh wait. He's getting like a like a revelation from the detective guards and he's like putting things together. It just felt a little ghost in the machine. Right. For that moment to happen there, it just feels a little brr, magical. That's it though. Mm. Even as someone who hasn't read the books, mm. I feel like this is a great entry point. Like yeah. you could be a fan or you could be a newbie. And I think Cross is a very easy entry point. And I think Prime Video Shows in particular do that very, very yes, well. Yes, I agree. Yep. Jack Reacher, Jack Ryan, The Terminal List, Alex Cross, Bosch especially. Because with all of these shows, you're kind of taken into these characters' lives in the middle. Mm. Maybe not The Terminal List because you see the origin in the first few episodes. But with Reacher, with Jack Ryan, with Cross, you know, Reacher's just wandering the streets and you're yeah. like, oh, who is this big guy? And no, but like with Reacher, you don't, open with his gang. Only in the most recent season do you suddenly realize, oh, he's got a gang of people that he used to have around that he's then dropped. But now they've come back to help him. That said, Alex Cross is not the dad thriller that those other shows are. Mm. Like, I think people were starting to call it dad core. Yeah. Because they had a huge following and these shows did very well on Prime Video. Alex Cross is a very different kind of show. It's a lot more of a traditional thriller structure. However, it is very character-based in that Cross is dealing with a lot of stuff. He's dealing with grief. He's dealing with being black and a cop. He's dealing with a serial killer on the loose. He's dealing with raising a son. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's happening. And I think all of that's done very, very well because there's a real balance to the character stuff versus the actual mystery thriller bit that you are interested in because... It's quite cool what the serial killer is all about. Yes, that story was quite Like the compelling. concept of the serial killer yeah. is cool. Yeah, that was cool. I will say I do have a small nitpick. I kind of didn't like the fact that he was essentially working on two big cases at the same time. Right. Yeah, and the second case sort of resolves itself a little easily. So that was my thing. I think had it just focused on all that stuff that you mentioned without the secondary threat to him, aside from the main serial killer case, I think I would have preferred it better. I think the introduction of that makes it a little over the top and a bit much for me. I didn't mind that as much because I figured it kind of tied into his whole grief storyline and pushed him further. I would have wished that second B plot overarching story plot thing would have been the reason for season two. Like, I didn't like that it was the threat over the course of six episodes and then in seven and eight, it gets solved. Well, you say that, but actually I'm glad that it wasn't. And I wanted to tell people this because these eight episodes feel like a self-contained novel. Sure. And it feels like it's done. And I really appreciate that. Yeah, because I agree. For the most part, I think you can sit back and just enjoy the story for what it is. And that's very rare when it comes to TV. Mm. I don't know if there's going to be a season two. I hope there is going to be a season two. I want more Aldous Hodge. I think he has been a leading man in waiting for far too long. Agreed. And I like this structure. And I think Bosch does something similar for the most part, most of the stories are tied up within one season. In Bosch, there was the murder of his mother that carried on across multiple seasons, but it was in no way a major arc at all. Right, okay. It was just something that was mentioned and that he was investigating on the side, and it didn't really impact the main thriller story of what was going on. Okay, I get And that. I think I like the way that Cross handles its major plot points involving character as well. I think they took a page out of the Bosch book to do that. So yes, I don't want to give anything away, which is why I'm being very vague and ambiguous about it. But I liked it and I think it felt satisfying to me as an audience member just because I'm not hanging around waiting for something to be resolved. Yeah, I get that. I get that. And also because it didn't feel like it didn't feel like a crucial, crucial element of the story that they were trying to tell in this season. I just didn't like that it resolved so easily at the end. If you're looking for a great thriller, 
Cross should be on your list. You should watch it. It's streaming on Prime Video. All eight episodes are out right now. We highly recommend it. I have to say, I think Prime Video has done the novelization adaptations very, very well. Much better than what Netflix has done of late. Yeah, I agree. They seem to be onto some winning formula or at least hiring the right people to do it because I've enjoyed every last one. The Terminal List is probably the least enjoyable, but I still, I didn't have a terrible time, let's say. Yeah. And it felt true to the books as well because The Terminal List, yet again, are written for the US military dad crowd. Mm, I see. Revenge porn crowd, right? That's who The Terminal List is written for. Right. Catch Cross, it's now streaming on Prime Video. Let us know what you think once you've seen it. You know how to reach out, Goggler MY, all of our social media feeds. You can also email us on podcast at goggler.my or send us a WhatsApp on the Goggler hotline, 012-524-5208. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Goggler Podcast.